Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. It's time for my second car review from update 1.49. This time it's going to be the brand new Group 1 race car, the Genesis Vision Grand Racer. So it pretty much turned into a Group 1 car out of absolutely nowhere. However, it's really not too surprising with the recent announcement that Genesis owners, Hyundai Motor Company, is wanting to get into the world of endurance racing in the top tier so the hypercar class etc now in terms of the price point it is going to be the standard 1 million credits that is because it is still classed as a vision car in terms of the overall stats so the pp rating is 887.08 the drivetrain is four wheel drive maximum power is 869 brake horsepower weighing 1089 kilograms and the aspiration is turbocharged and supercharged for those in the know when it comes to the grand racer you'll probably take note that the power drop is absolutely massive from what was originally promised at 1400 brake horsepower so it definitely seems to have been categorized pretty much out of nowhere so before we get into the review there's going to be two stages to the review process for this car so straight away we will get the standard version and lap it around the Nordschleife and then see where it comes in on our lap time leaderboard. We will then start putting the upgrades on and then head over to Suzuka circuit to do the same. So the standard version of this car very much keeps the characteristics of the original Genesis VGT. By that I mean that it's a very very powerful car that constantly wants to spin up its tyres. In terms of the gearing for this one, you will probably find yourself absolutely shooting through them out of every single corner. Short shifting is a massive thing with this. Now in terms of the styling, of course it very much just looks like they took the original Genesis VGT and then planted a massive rear wing on it. Now again, I will just kind of talk about some of the changes from the press release of the concept car to what we actually have in game. Now, I would not be surprised if we get a full-blown VGT version of this a little later down the line. So, again, in terms of the power, it was originally around about 1450 brake horsepower. Um, in terms of the aero, it was supposed to be active aero. However, there is none of that in-game now. Ever since it kind of dropped into that category, it does seem that a lot of what was originally promised with the concept is entirely gone. So it really wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden they'll just pop in the original version uh, from that press release by Hyundai Genesis etc. So I do feel like we'll probably see this car once again but probably in its full blown form. So certainly in terms of the car we're seeing here and the car that was originally promised this is an entirely different version of it. Now of course some extra changes come with the dashboard itself so the interior views etc. There is sort of this massive rear mirror that goes across the entire dash. You've also got a completely different steering wheel when it comes to this car. Very much, you know, a race-based design. Uh, pretty futuristic, but not kind of too, you know, out there where it just comes, becomes absolutely ridiculous. And in terms of the car and the design, I could probably definitely see this running in, you know, sort of your LMDH or, you, you know, your WEC. Um, hypercar categories in the future and it is a pretty funny time in that it was only around about a month ago Hyundai was saying they are you know thinking of joining uh, the WEC etc and then all of a sudden the Grand Racer concept appears and then all of a sudden a group one racing version of that appears in Gran Turismo 7 so who knows it does seem that the possibility is there for this to be transferred into a full-blown real-life race car so for me personally i was a pretty big fan of the original genesis vgt and i think if you've put a decent amount of track time with that car in then honestly you shouldn't have any issues kind of transferring over to the grand racer they do feel very very similar of course the grand racer does have much more aero uh, one of the main complaints about the original was that even when you was kind of banging through the gears the rear end would constantly spin up the wheels and it is the same here um, of course it is remedied by an, a you know a set of racing medium tires so there is much more grip available and of course we've now got that huge shark fin the huge rear wing so there is a lot more in terms of aero that is planting the car down however it does still have that issue of putting a lot of horsepower down 
almost instantly. We do also have the hybrid boost as well. So this thing is a seriously powerful bit of kit. Certainly not the easiest Group 1 car to drive. However, once you get past that learning curve, you could probably get a lot out of this car. So let's talk about my final thoughts on the Vision Grand Racer. Now, of course, I do think it's a pretty fantastic car. Whilst it isn't the best of the best in every single sense, it does have some very, very high standout points. Number one is the top speed on this thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. You're talking about 230 miles per hour from a Group 1 race car. That's getting into the territory and exceeding some of the old Group C monsters, which is just absolutely insane. In terms of the handling and the way that it drives, it certainly is something that I definitely feel you'll have to adjust to. I don't know if it's because of the new physics or just how powerful this car is. Short shifting is going to be your best friend. As well as the grip levels, they don't feel just quite there. But again, I haven't tried every single Group 1 car yet, so this may just be down to the brand new physics um, at play. So overall, yes, we did get a different version from what was in that original, I guess, press release. Um, of course, this is now a categoried grouped race car. Do I think we'll see the original in a few months' time, maybe? Absolutely. Again, that does seem like an entirely different beast. Of course, it would be too powerful to really get into a category. So I think what we're seeing here is the start of more Genesis race cars. Of course, we have the Group 4, the Group 3, the Group 1, the VGT, and probably the absolutely mental VGT version of the Grand Racer coming a little bit later down the line. And I don't mind it. It's a nice design. It's a pretty great car overall. And I really don't have any complaints. In fact, I'm pretty glad that we got the downgraded version. This gives us a brand new Group 1 race car. And for me, the Group 1 category certainly needs that bit extra love in terms of post-launch release. So the Genesis VGT is going to go up and across the line to finish off our second ever lap of the Nordschleifer on our new lap time leaderboard. So let's go ahead and check out where it managed to place. I think this one's obvious. So there's only two cars on this list and the Genesis Grand Racer does manage to come in first place, of course. So with a PP rating of 887.08 on the racing medium compound of tyres, it does it in a time of 5 minutes 49.838, our new leader on our lap time leaderboard. However, there is one more lap time to go. This is with the maximum PP we can get from the Genesis race car, which will include the fully customizable racing transmission and of course the racing softs. And this car becomes an absolute behemoth. And now is the point where I can talk about upgrades when it comes to the Genesis. Whilst you will probably need to actually go the opposite way and downgrade this car, Overall, it does make for a pretty fantastic 800 PP race car. In terms of the Sardinia grind and Spa grind, this car is pretty fantastic. Definitely one of the highlights that I've tried so far, and one of the better 800 cars overall. So it does have the versatility of being a fairly decent grind car. It's not just one of those cars that's appeared in the game and then will just be completely useless for the rest of its life cycle. Really does seem to suit the new physics and really does seem to suit the new PP ratings as well. So a pretty versatile car as well. Now in terms of the car here, of course I did mention that we had the racing softs on and I do feel like they add just that extra bit to an already pretty fantastic car. The amount of grip you'll start getting out of those racing softs is ridiculous. You will still have to short shift in the Genesis and again it certainly isn't the most downforce heavy car. However, it does really, really well when it comes to putting the power down uh, in such a quick, rapid time. You'll notice as soon as you start shifting through the gears, the hybrid kicks in, all of the power is being put down, and it'll rock it off and go to some incredible top speeds. As you can see here at Suzuka, I did even manage to misjudge the left-hander here. So, as you can see, just not slowing down just enough, not realizing just how fast this thing actually goes. And of course, with the fully customizable racing transmission, it does seem to make the gearbox much more responsive overall. So there we go, the Grand Racer finishes its upgraded lap time. So let's head over and see where it ranks. 
So once again, it does go top. A PP rating max upgrades of 897.41 on the racing soft compound of tyre. It did it in a time of a 1 minute 46.375. And that is now going to be the benchmark for everything else to come. So there we have it, that is my second car review of update 1.49. There's still four other cars to go. A massive thank you to all of my channel members for your continued support. And a massive thank you to you guys watching at home. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, wherever you may be. Take care guys, peace.